my last election. Basically, yeah. And After thing. my election, I have more flexibility. Yeah. Yeah. And this thing. I transmit this information to Vladimir and Mr. Uh, and we'll be monitoring very carefully the situation. Uh, recognizing that along with our European partners and the international community, there will be consequences uh, if people step over the line. President Obama's defense chief says he wants to reduce army troop levels to numbers last seen in 1940 and ground an entire class of Air Force warplanes, all moves said to be supported by the Joint Chiefs of Staff. The Pentagon today recommending some steep budget cuts for our nation's army, actually explaining how they're going to deal with the budget cuts that could bring their levels to the lowest since before World War II. Well, former Army Vice Chief of Staff General Jack Keane says cuts are understandable, but these are disproportionate to the rest of the federal budget. Keane says about cutting the Army, this is cutting into a deterrent force that prevents wars from happening and is a military that is capable of responding if called by the Commander-in-Chief. The retiring chairman of the House Armed Services Committee sounds concerned as well. In the last few years, we have changed our strategy that has stood us well since World War II, that we should be able to be equipped, ready to go, two major contingencies at a time. We have cut that back to fight one and hold one. Russia is making good on a recent promise to expand its military footprint around the globe. A Russian warship is docked in Cuba's Havana Harbor this morning. That's about 100 miles from Florida. The ship quietly floated into the cruise terminal with no explanation from Cuban state media. The Russian ship is from a class generally used for intelligence gathering. North Korea fired four short-range missiles off its eastern coast this morning. The missiles were fired from a site near the border with South Korea. That's according to South Korea's defense ministry. The North has fired short-range missiles into the Sea of Japan in the past during military exercises. We believe, uh, National Security Advisor Rice has made it very clear, and I've made it clear, that intervention would, in our judgment, be a very grave mistake. We are watching to see, as the Secretary said, uh, whether or not Russia is doing anything that might be crossing uh, the line in any way. We strongly support Ukraine's territorial integrity and sovereignty, and we expect other nations to do the same. We urge all parties to avoid steps that could be misinterpreted or lead to a miscalculation at this delicate time. Ian Lee joins us now live from Kiev. Ian, what can you tell us about reports that the airport there has been shut down and the airspace closed? Well, Jake, the men that have taken this airport or who have been there, I think we don't know who they are, but I think what we are seeing is the most telling. These are very professional looking uh, soldiers. They have 
new equipment, new uniforms, and they're moving in a way that it's not a, would be like a ragtag force. Now, we don't know why the airspace has been closed. Neither the civil administration here in Kiev or in the Crimea has given any reason why or when it will reopen again, uh, but definitely tense times here. What do you know about reports of the Russian military moving directly into Crimea? This is something we've been watching all day, whether it be YouTube videos or on multiple uh, local networks. We're seeing helicopters, at least 11 helicopters, moving across the Crimea towards an area called Baalbek. We're also seeing armored personnel carriers rumbling down the streets of the Crimea, a YouTube video of that. And all this really is backed up by the government, saying what we're witnessing is an annexation of the area. And as you pointed out earlier as well, a pro-Russian television station has what we're hearing are Marines from the Black Sea Fleet securing it to make sure that it's not hampered with as well, tampered with as well. And as well, uh, we're, all, we're, we're also hearing is that uh, there, that these forces are moving toward an area uh, of the capital, Severopol. So Ian, as the Ukrainian authorities say that there has been an in invasion of some sort, uh, have they decided what to do? Any movements, for instance, by the Ukrainian military? Well, yeah, the, the government is basically calling this an invasion, an annexation of uh, the Crimean Peninsula. Uh, they've said they've called for restraint from the Russians. They're saying that the Russians need to leave. But they're also saying that the Ukrainian military needs to show restraint. They're saying they don't want any more bloodshed. And right behind me here in Kiev, they're still mourning the people who died in those bloody uh, protests. Uh, just, just very recent, dozens of people died there. They're still mourning. They don't want to see any more bloodshed. They're trying to go to the international community. They're trying to go to the United Nations Security Council, which is convening. They're trying to also go to the European Union to send monitors here to make sure that the sovereignty of Ukraine is respected, Jake. Bob Schieffer today spoke with Defense Secretary Chuck Hagel about U.S. military options. Bob, what did he have to say? Well, I'll tell you, Scott, it was just before the president spoke and he pointedly told me it would be a mistake if the Russians move forces into other parts of Ukraine. Um, uh, this could uh, be a very dangerous situation if this continues in a, in a very um, provocative way. The latest is about half an hour ago, I left the airport uh, at Simferopol, which has been under the control of unidentified soldiers since uh, overnight early this morning. I'm on the highway right now, about 10 kilometers from that airport, and what I've seen in the past several minutes are about half a dozen Russian military troop transporters. I'm saying Russian because these are trucks that bore Russian license plates. Uh, they were carrying troops. We briefly saw that they were troops, armed troops. They were all headed in the same direction. Uh, they bifurcated in a road. Some started going on the road towards Yalta, but pulled over, uh, perhaps because they saw us following behind them. Uh, but what we can definitely confirm at this hour is that there are Russian military troop transporters with armed soldiers inside, Russian license plates. They are on the move and they are going somewhere, half a dozen of them. So there's definitely some military movement adrift, and uh, you and Ukrainian uh, Ukrainians we've been speaking to say that this is 
inhabitual. They are not accustomed to seeing Russian trucks, Russian military trucks carrying our men on the road in and around this capital. They began seeing them really yesterday, uh, early yesterday, and today there seems to be a heavier presence. We saw lots of trucks coming and going uh, earlier today from the airport. But like I said, I'm right now on a highway outside uh, the airport, and there are Russian military trucks on the move at this hour. And Douglas, is there any sign of any Ukrainian troops? Uh, if there are Ukrainian troops, I have not seen them today. Uh, there are, obviously, Ukraine does have a standing army. Uh, Ukraine does have troops. But the only troop presence that has been visible, at least to us today, and we have been around uh, mostly the airport area and the areas in and around the airport, uh, it has been soldiers in unmarked uniforms. When you ask Ukrainians who these soldiers are, they will tell you they're not, they're not ours. They're not Nashi. They are, they say in, in Ukrainian, uh, they say they are Russian troops. But like I said, we cannot confirm their identity, only to say they're unidentified, believed to perhaps be Russian because they have been uh, accompanied by pro-Russian militants, not in uniform, who've been keeping journalists and other curious uh, members of the public away from them wherever they happen to be patrolling. But the main news at this hour, I can say, is yes, the airport in Simferopol remains under the control of these unidentified soldiers, bearing machine guns, in some cases rocket-propelled rocket grenades. And outside, on the roads outside the airport, there are Russian military trucks on the move. Where they're going, unknown at this hour. Uh, sometimes they pull over on the road and stop uh, to let other cars pass. But they are definitely going somewhere. And how are the civilians on the ground reacting to this presence? Uh, there seems to be a lot of confusion. Uh, people asking us as journalists today, what's going on, what's going on, who are these people? Uh, so there's really confusion all around. There seems to be uncertainty and a sense of who is really in control here right now in Crimea because every morning you wake up and it seems to be a new, a new story with either the parliament under uh, control of armed men this morning being the, both airports here, civilian and military, uh, other government buildings. So there's real sense of uh, uncertainty among the local population. Who is controlling things? Which military powers are in control? If there are Ukrainian troops, like you were saying earlier, where are they? Why aren't they visible at this hour? Uh, are the Russians, are these Russian troops, and if so, are they trying to take control of key installations in this region at this hour? Over the last several days, the United States has been responding to events as they unfold in Ukraine. Now, throughout this crisis, we have been very clear about one fundamental principle. The Ukrainian people deserve the opportunity to determine their own future. Together with our European allies, we have urged an end to the violence and encouraged Ukrainians to pursue a course in which they stabilize their country, forge a broad-based government, and move to elections this spring. I also spoke several days ago with President Putin, and my administration has been in daily communication with Russian officials. And we've made clear that they can be part of an international community's effort to support the stability and success of a united Ukraine going forward which is not only in the interest of the people of Ukraine and the international community, but also in Russia's interest. Uh, however, we are now deeply concerned by reports of military movements taken by the Russian Federation inside of Ukraine. Russia has a historic relationship with Ukraine, including cultural and economic ties and a military facility in Crimea. But any violation of Ukraine's sovereignty and territorial integrity would be deeply destabilizing, which is not in the interest of Ukraine, Russia, or Europe. It would represent a profound interference in matters that must be determined by the Ukrainian people. It would be a clear violation of Russia's commitment to respect the independence and sovereignty and borders of Ukraine and of international laws. And just days after the world came to Russia for the Olympics,